Good morning, Neil. And Copeland this morning said that you can't have the rock without the roll, that the rest of them were the rock, but that Charlie Watts was the roll. And we tend to forget about yeah. the drummers a lot of the time, don't we? Well, that's true. And, you know, when, when you know, great bands always defer to the drummer. Um, you know, the engine room is what, uh, you know, drives rock and roll. And uh, it's something that, you know, you two have acknowledged with Larry Mullen uh, in an Irish context. And, and uh, certainly Charlie Watts was uh, at the heart of everything great that the Rolling Stones uh, did. Does the drummer the control people- the song then? Does the drummer control the performance? I know he controls the tempo or she. Well, 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 well yes. But, but I think that, put it this way. If you've got a bad drummer in a band, you're banjo. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, and, and 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 Charlie was technically very good. You know, Charlie was a jazz man, uh, and he kind of slipped into rock and roll. And people, you know, people, he has been described as 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 a reluctant rock and roller, and that is true. In a way, it's just that musically he was very evolved. He he was into uh, you know R and B, rhythm and blues, uh, black music, uh, you know, and jazz music, and, uh, and 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 that formed the core bedrock of the Rolling Stones sound. Uh, and 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 so he is. I mean, there's a great story about uh, you know Ch- Ch- Charlie and and and, and Keith and uh, the the. the uh, Charlie and Keith and Mick. There was always this sense that Mick and Keith were the Rolling Stones, you know. And uh, anyway, one one night, Jagger, uh, Mick Jagger, report uh, he he woke uh, Charlie Watts bellowing down the phone, "Where's my drummer?" <laughs> right. And uh, Charlie was a man who always loved his good suit. He dressed impeccably. Yeah. And he got out of bed. He put on his good suit. He went down to the lobby of the hotel and he punched Mick Jagger. <laughs> he hit him a smack in the gob. And he said, don't ever call me your drummer again. You're my uh, uh, bleep singer. <laughs> <laughs> he, he wasn't, he was nowhere like the Hellraiser that Jagger and Keith Richards are, though. He had a much quieter kind of a guy, wasn't he? He was a loving husband, uh, you know, married all his life, same woman. Father, yeah. you know. Yeah, but but look, he was he was he was just a good guy, you know. Genuinely, he was it was a great musician. Uh, but he was a good guy. He was completely grounded. He didn't really uh, get into this whole star trip. And there's a lot of musicians like that. A lot of musicians actually look on the fame part of things, you know, the attention uh, as a real negative. I mean, the great. You know, Cork uh, g- g- hero Rory Gallagher was the same. He wasn't interested in the stardom. He wasn't interested in, uh, you know, the, 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 the trappings of success. He was interested in the music, in actually, making great music. Yeah, actually, the, and, uh, and, uh, the Stones played Cork in 65. There's a super article in The Examiner this morning, which just picking up on what you said there, that in the audience at the gig in 65 was 16-year-old Rory Gallagher, and for many years, of course, we know of his fantastic talent, but briefly, apparently, he was in the frame to join the Rolling Stones. Is that true? Well, that's, that's absolutely true. He, 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 he was invited to, to, to come out to uh, play with the Rolling Stones. I mean, this is in the context of, of, of uh, the Stones had a few changes in guitar uh, player along the way. And Mick Taylor was making ex- exit. Uh, and ultimately, Ronnie Wood uh, of the Faces uh, would become the new Rolling Stones guitar player. But Rory was invited uh, to come along, uh, jam, uh, see how it all felt uh, from both points of view. Uh, and ultimately, uh, you know, Rory was a very uh, individual character who loved the fact that he was in control of his own destiny. Yeah. Uh, you know, he made that decision, leave taste behind, uh, you know, not not be bound by the shackles of managers who didn't understand, yeah. and, you know, having to take dictates from from other musicians and whereas Rory would have would have loved working with Keith Richards and working with uh, you know the, the the Charlie and the other musicians uh, he preferred to plough his own furrow yeah um, and 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 uh, so the, 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 let's say the magic that might have been uh, had Rory actually joined the Stones didn't ever they uh, did just fine happen. even without the great Rory Gallagher they say that gig on Lee side in 65 was incredible they had to call the guards that you could not hear hear the music in the Savoy. Imagine that the band couldn't hear their own music. 
I know, yeah. Well, I, the thing is, they, in that area, you know, there was this idea, you're either a Beatles or a Stones uh, fan, you know, and, and people say, yeah, yeah, for the Beatles or the Stones, which, I, you know, and I was both. You know, and I- 